Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at Watchbox Reviews. I would really appreciate it and I promise to update daily. If you love this watch, you could see it and you can purchase it on our website, thewatchbox.com. And today we are discussing my favorite modern Tudor watch. This is the Tudor Heritage Advisor. The modern version of the Heritage Advisor was launched at Basel 2011 and the black dial model you see here was launched in 2013. When you combine the base caliber with the Tudor manufacturer complication, you wind up with the most complicated watch Tudor has ever made. 42 millimeters in stainless steel and grade 5 titanium, it is a large timepiece. On my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, it wears big but not overpoweringly huge. The watch is 42 millimeters in diameter, exactly 14 millimeters thick, and if you measure it from lug to lug, it's a reasonable 49.5 millimeters, principally titanium. It wears a little bit lighter than you'd expect. Expect. And the spacing between the lugs is a very modern 22 millimeters. So this one has a nice proportional stance relative to its case. It does look like a modern watch, not a vintage retro nostalgia play a la Tudor Black Bay or Ranger. This is a timepiece that is of our era, even if its heritage dates back to the 1950s. Now, the timepiece is rather complex. As you can see, there's a lot going on on the dial side, so I may as well just explain what the alarm sounds like before we get any deeper into the review. And sometimes actions speak louder than words. So you can see there are two alarm-specific sub-complications. One is an on-off feature, so you, you can turn the alarm on or off. The other is a power reserve at 3 o'clock that represents the energy available for the alarm. You've also got a pointer-style date down at 6 o'clock, and then you've got the indicator for the alarm itself. Jumping back into the fit, the feel, and the sizing, let's talk a little bit about the strap. As you can see, large rectangular scale alligator leather. It is a semi-gloss. It's bolstered a little bit. It has a stitched and folded edge with a monotone stitch, and you can see that there's calfskin on the underside of the alligator top, and it is a new Tudor factory strap, so you'll have the privilege of crimping and gouging it first. We tend to sell our pre-owned watches on new straps for that very reason. The case band itself is fascinating in that it's high polished grade 5 titanium, which in my experience is probably the toughest mainstream case material to scratch. But a number of contact points are of steel, so the pusher actuator for the on-off function of the alarm, the bezel as well as the crowns are of steel, and then you have a deployant clasp that is also of steel. It features the Tudor shield and a clamshell locking system. Inside, you can see some impressive refinements, including spring-loaded ceramic pin snaps, and these help the clasp to maintain tight tolerances over time, as the steel cannot aggress against the ceramic spring-loaded balls. So the tolerances will remain excellent, and this will remain a sharply assembled, crisp actuating clasp. Quite secure when closed. It has a nice curvature to its underside to trace the underside of the wrist, which is curved, soft, and sensitive. Well done. I also like the contrast between the satin and the polish. Now, jumping back to the watch, you can see a little bit of that. There is satin finish on the hoods of the lugs, but the lugs are delightfully spare. What could have been overpowering lugs, given the size and proportions of the case, are well tapered and judiciously so. This was thoughtful design on the part of the style team to visually pair some of the mass of the watch. Two crowns. The one at the top of the dial winds and sets the alarm, and then the one at the base winds and sets the time of day. It also activates the quick set for the pointer date, and you can see that there is a Tudor Rose logo, the pre-1968 logo on the crown, and then on the dial, as well as the clasp body, you have the modern post-1968 Tudor Shield logo. The dial is a matte black with excellent depth. You can see there's a rayhot or flange outboard that slopes down to the hour track, which features all diamond polished and applique indices and tri-Arabic numerals 9, 12, and 3. There are also diamond or pyramid style applique indices in board of the numerals. There's a raised pointer style date with a little bit of a matte center and you can see how you retain the underlying ETA 2892A2 quick set mechanism 
as well as the hacking seconds mechanism so you can stop the seconds and synchronize to a date. The watch, 100 meters water resistant, very swimmable, provided you put it on a water resistant band. We'll follow our journey from the Rayhot into the center dial now where you can see an aperture for the on off. You can see the little swoosh style complication for the power reserve. I'll demonstrate how that works in reverse by winding the power reserve for the alarm a little bit. Fully energized, it can run for 20 to 30 seconds. And then there's a raised matte finished dial center. Underneath the case back, ETA 289282. It's a 21 joule base, automatic winding, bi-directional, stop seconds, quick set date, four hertz beat rate. So you got a 28,800 vibration per hour beat rate. You also have a Tudor complication module so everything you see here, the pointer style date, the power reserve, the alarm, the alarm on off, that is all Tudor. So you've got a high grade ETA 2892A2 and then you have the Tudor alarm and complication module which means you have a tank tough watch supported by the Rolex Tudor Empire with an ETA movement supported by the Swatch Group Empire. It's the best of both worlds in a handsome and versatile package. See it and make it yours on the watch box. Tudor Heritage Advisor Alarm Watch by Night.